Well, hello there. Thought I'd make this and do an overview and help some people out because this is quite a project. This is on a Mazda CX-9. It's a 2007 all-wheel drive. This is the rear hub. It's an entire assembly. This is what you have to take out in order to get the hub off and put the new one on. Uh, or if you wanted to press the bearing out and put a new bearing in, you could do that too. But honestly, I can't find the bearings. Uh, they just sell the assembly for the rear. For the front, you can do either. And for the front, it's press in, press out bearing. So, you know, if you wanted to buy the whole assembly, it'd save you some time if you wanted to spend a little bit more money. But anyway, I'm not going to go into a heck of a lot of detail on this because there's not, there's not a good way to show you much of anything. It's a part now, so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. But while it's installed and stuff I can't crawl under here and show you there's just no room so special tools that you will need or just you know tools that you will need that may not be special you're gonna need a, you're gonna need 21 millimeter socket to get the lugs off and then you're not gonna need it after that nothing else on here is 21 uh, an inch and a quarter socket will take the spindle nut off. Where's my finger? The sun's shining right on the lens. Wherever the spindle's at, it's it's right there. You can see it. Anyway, the nut is right here, and an inch and a quarter will fit that nice and snug. You're not going to spin unless you get it put on there crooked. And I would recommend heavily a three-quarter breaker bar or a three-quarter ratchet, three-quarter drive ratchet, I mean, you know, like uh, that one there, because that's a lot of force you got to put on this to break it off. Could you use an impact? I mean, yeah, if you want to, but I I don't know that it'd break it loose. It might, but I don't know. Uh, the other thing, while we're talking about the spindle, the nut is staked. Like right here, you can see where I beat it back out. But when it's on the CV axle, right there, you've got that divot they put in. So when the nut's on there... Well, I can't put it back on. I mushroomed it out. We'll talk about that in a second. But this flat part of the nut here, you get it on and you get it tight, then you're supposed to take a punch and hammer that material in there so that the nut doesn't spin off. That's totally up to you whether or not you want to do that on reassembly. But to get the nut off, you kind of have to beat that back out so it's round so it'll spin and not uh, not tear stuff up. Or at least so it'll it'll spin some. I mean, this is just a flat portion here. So if you don't do that, it worse. It's just going to catch on this little cutout. But you're not on any threads or anything. There's no flat, you know, the flat part of the nut, that material is not going to be touching these threads. So, you know, it's up to you whether or not you want to stake that out. It'll make it a lot easier to get it off. The best way to do it is to start with like a nail set because that's really, really small and get in there and start getting it out and then just go in with a series of increasingly larger punches. The manual states that you should come in with a chisel and like chisel it out. But if you wanted to reuse the nut, which you can, you know, you can buy new nuts, but uh, if you wanted to reuse the nut, then you'd have to be a little bit more careful on how you take it out. So you can't just chisel it apart and then spin it off. So you'll need all that to get the spindle nut off. So we'll go over the order of operations for, how I took all this off and how I recommend you do it here after a bit. But for now, there's that. You will also need to separate the hub from the rest of the assembly. These are T60 Torx bits, okay? You'll need a T60. Could you get in there with a T55? Yes, you could, but it would be loose. And personally, I don't like putting something in there and having it move back and forth like that. Because if you slip with that or you spin with it, you're just going to tear it up. And it's going to be really, really hard to get get all that off. Um, so yeah, a T60 Torx, I recommend in half inch drive. But a 3 8 drive would probably be okay. It's mainly just so you can get, uh, get on the impact with it and get it off a lot easier. By the way, an impact gun helps tremendously. Just ignore that. I know you're not supposed to use chrome sockets on an impact, but I don't care because that's what I got. So yeah, an impact does help tremendously. Uh, that vibration will help break stuff loose. 
and not break your hands doing it. Just don't go nuts with it when you're tightening stuff back down because it's really easy to over tighten certain things with an impact. That vibration, you know, it's not that they put out a lot of torque, it's just all that vibration. You'll seat fasteners a lot better with an impact and sometimes you don't want to do that because if the next guy comes along he may not be able to impact them back off that's just the way it is so what else in turn uh da, da, da. all right so other sizes you'll need you'll need a 19 millimeter for the bolts that hold all these arms and linkages on you'll need a 17 millimeter for the shock absorber you'll need i think the 17 is what fits the caliper bolts you'll want a 13 millimeter the parking brake cable which is back underneath there there is one bolt that goes back up underneath and when you if you do this you'll see what i'm talking about you trace the cable there's a mount that goes back up underneath and it's right next to where this part is bolted on and that one bolt is 13 millimeters so you'll need a socket for that you'll need a 14 millimeter for the nut for that i guess that's the trailing arm i'm not sure what you would call it but that nut on there is 14 and then as you can see here that's hex headed and that is let me find the ratchet that i was ah there it is there's the socket right here you want a number five little Allen key or bit, and that'll fit in there and hold this. And then you can get on with your 14 millimeter wrench and break the nut loose and spin it off. And all the, the Allen bit, all that's supposed to do is just stop that from spinning in there while you get it off. Uh, what else? You need, you need a 12 millimeter wrench to get the where the parking brake bolts to the assembly right here those are 12 millimeter headed bolts the bolt that holds the abs sensor in is 10 mil and i believe that's about it so you know if you have a basic tool set with all the sockets and i advise you have one with varying lengths of you know extensions and deep well and just regular ones it helps out a lot. Uh, it gives you some options depending on how you want to do it. A good set of punches is also important because one of the first things you're going to have to do, if these are the original hubs and rotors, which they might be, in this case, this Mazda's got 365,000 miles on it. These are the factory hubs and rotors because they've got the rotor screws, or they had them, and those are dumb. And if you can get them out with a Phillips headed screwdriver, that's great power to you. But I couldn't, so I just drilled them out and I beat the rotor off. Nothing wrong with that because I'm not putting those things back on. The new hubs don't come with the holes drilled for the rotor screws. And I wouldn't put the rotor screws back in even if they did come drilled for them. That's, I hate that stuff. It's just a pain in the ass. Um, your parking brake cable, which is right here. The best way to do it's the way it's hooked on there and again you'll see it if you do this project you'll want to take a wrench or something and shove it back and then just kind of maneuver that off of there i advise taking the cable loose from here and uh it also does bolt well it bolts right there it acts as a washer on that piece and then it also goes back underneath and bolts in i advise taking all that loose first and then coming and disconnecting it because that gives you some slack you can work with to get it off. So that's important. And what else? What else did I have to have to start getting stuff off? Let's see. You got to have the Torx bit. You got to have the big thing to get the axle nut off. You got to get the lugs off. There was another tool that I was using that was important. I don't. I don't remember what it was. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, the spindle. To get the spindle unseated, and it's it's splined. It's a tight fit. It's not a press fit, okay? To get it off, you're going to want a bar about that length. Something like that is, is handy. You're going to want a big hammer. You can get like a two-pound or a four-pound hammer. That would be fine. And then you're also going to want a good, like a ball peen. This is a... I think it's a 20 ounce. That's a pretty good size to swing around because when the spindle's through here, 
with its end all the way, it'll be sticking out here. You gotta hammer it out of this, all right? So you put the big hammer up against this flat part, and then you beat on the big hammer with a ball peen hammer, and that'll start driving it back. Sometimes this gets dry in here and it, and it gets rusted and seized. You have enough clearance in here as long as this is tilted kind of back to where uh, lubricant or penetrant can flow down through it. You can use whatever. I like this stuff though. This is pretty nice. And uh, you can spray it in there and it'll work its way down through and it will help break that loose. And so between the penetrant getting in there and you hammering on it, it will eventually pop out. But in order to do that, you have to have everything loose here first because otherwise the shaft has nowhere to go. So you kind of have to get this whole assembly loose so it's leaning out or it's, you know, out away from stuff. And you can push the uh, shaft back while you're hammering on it so that that will all work like it should. And then you got to be careful because if you hit on it too hard or if you hit on it the wrong way, you'll start to mushroom this damn thing, especially if it's in there stiff you'll start mushrooming it and then you'll have to like grind it or file it down, which is what I'm going to have to do, but that's not a big deal. So I know there was something else I was supposed to mention that was important, but I can't think of what it was. So order of operations for how you should get this off. This is just my opinion. Okay. First thing you need to do obviously is jack up the vehicle. You're going to want a good floor jack, you're gonna want a couple of good jack stands, uh, plenty of blocks, block your front tire so that it doesn't roll. Uh, don't set your parking brake because you have to take the parking brake off, so don't do that. Um, a small bottle jack is handy. That allows you to get like directly underneath this and once you get it loose from stuff, you can kind of push it up and keep it square to the CV axle, if that makes any sense, so that you can drive it straight out. Because if you've got the CV axle at an angle, like if the spindle's pointed down, you're going to be driving it up and it's, it's not going to work very well. You're going to be fighting it. Uh, uh, that's all very important. You'll need all that. And then just kind of work it loose. So once you have all your tools, I'm sorry, I had a brain fart. Anyway, order of operations for getting this off. First thing you need to do is break the axle nut loose. You could just pull the little center cap, you know, this thing, just pull that out of your hub. Small screwdriver, you can get in there and pry it out. Get that out, break your axle nut loose. Don't take it off, just break it loose, okay? Make sure it spins freely. All right, then jack the vehicle up, take your wheel off, get your rotor off, get your caliper off, and then get your ABS sensor and all that off, get it out of the way, get your parking brake cable out of the way. Loosen your shock absorber if you want, or you can wait till later. The next thing you need to do after you got all the you know easy stuff off, then you're ready to start taking this assembly out. There are five bolts in this. There are varying lengths. Okay, there are three short ones and two long ones. The two long ones go back in here, and the three long ones go in this area. So they're right. They're right there. Once you've got all that loose, then you can come over here and loosen that and that and that. Those bolts are like so. Now the nuts for those bolts. This is kind of interesting. You know, they've got these little cages here, so make sure that when you put stuff back together, you get those in. When you get the bolt loose and you pull it out, I advise pulling those nuts out so you don't drop them or something like that and lose them. That's just optional. Now, once you've got all this stuff loose, you can kind of wrestle it out and then hammer your shaft and, you know, just pry this stuff off. The bushings are probably going to be pretty tight and it's going to want to grip everything. So you're just going to have to work on it and, and wrestle it. Getting it off is easier than putting it back on, if you can believe it. Get, trying to get this thing back on is quite difficult. It's not fun and it's not easy, but it is doable, you know, because I've already done one side. And then, you know, just kind of wrestle it in, put it back together, use your blocks, use your bottle jack, use your bar, 
and just uh, you know, just work stuff in as best you can. Big thing that'll save you a lot of time. Make sure that this is cleaned and oiled really well so that it just slides right in because the the side I did yesterday, the other side, I spent a long time wiggling that hub and wiggling that shaft trying to shove it through and you know tap 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 on it with a punch and a hammer to relax it and kind of vibrate it back through that was a nightmare so getting this stuff all cleaned up and so that it slides in easy is really important There's no good way to put it back together. There's no good technique. And, you know, maybe somebody else knows, but I sure as hell don't. It's just you got to wrestle it in here, and it's going to make you mad, and it's going to suck. But you can do it because I did it. So just having blocks and jacks and bars and extensions and stuff like that just kind of helps. It's easier to get the bottom parts in first and run the bolt through and then kind of get everything else back into place. But it's a trick to get everything back in. It's just, it's not fun. Uh, part numbers for the spindles, for not the spindle assembly, the hub assembly. This is the, and this came from O'Reilly because time was of the essence. We didn't have time to wait on Rock Auto to get stuff here, but this is the bearing for the front. And it's the same bearing. Uh, the hub is the same. There is your part number. And this is on O'Reilly for a Mazda CX-9. This is the all-wheel drive, the rear, or not rear wheel drive, but the front wheel drive exclusively. You know, that's a lot easier to screw with because you don't have that rear shaft coming through. And it's funny, uh, on this, a transfer case is shot. There's something wrong with it. And the all-wheel drive is never going to work because you can't get transfer cases right now because they're on a national back order. So they've been that way for three years. So, you know, this is never going to work again, but you got to leave it all in because the sensors are tied to it and it's just all kinds of stuff that you got to keep an eye out for and think about when you're doing projects like this. You, you can't just delete drive shafts, unfortunately. So overall, I rate this project a 3 out of 10. This is absolutely not fun. I hate it. It is painful and it takes time but if you know what comes off and kind of how it comes off that saves you a lot of time see on the other side i had to do it the hard way and guess i had a manual well i have a manual and i printed off these pages and it shows how everything goes together you know but on the other side i wasn't entirely sure how it was all going to come apart the instructions on this weren't like the most clear. I was able to extrapolate and figure it out. But the biggest thing that cost me on the other side was there was a bolt that broke off. It was one of those short bolts that went on that part there. And it broke off, or I spun the nut actually. And so I had to sit and grind the head of the bolt off with the air dremel here. And that took a couple hours. Because those bolts are harder than hell. And uh, that's what took a lot of the time and then just kind of figuring out how everything works. But now that I know how it works, you know, I had this off in, you know, an hour. And that's with grinding out the rotor screws and everything else. So I'm hoping that this video, even though it's long, I'm hoping that if somebody else does this project and they watch this first, they're like, oh, yeah, okay, that's how it all kind of comes out of there. And, you know, I am sorry I can't show you more and do a real professional-like video, but this is the best I can do. Time is of the essence on this project, but I I like to help people, and I think that it's important to share information like this, because when I was kind of looking for additional information, there weren't really any good videos, because most of the videos on Mazda rear wheel hubs were either for CX-7s or front-wheel drive only CX-9s, and this is an all-wheel drive, so that should help some people out. I'm hoping. I'm going to go ahead and cut the video here. I know it's not the best, but it should help somebody. That's the point of it. I'm going to wrestle this whole thing back together and see, see if that stops our noise problem. It should. And then, uh, and then I won't ever have to do it again. Because by the time these hubs wear out, the car's probably going to go to the scrapyard anyway. It'll be, it'll be worn out. I mean, or, you know, it might go another 300,000 miles. I don't know. Pretty good car. Just... Not fun to work on. So if you have any questions, 
you can ask them down below in the comment section and I'll do my best to help you out. I don't think I overlooked anything. I've just been kind of double checking my thoughts as I've been doing this video. That should cover everything. But uh, one other thing I will say though, I just remembered. If you're in the Rust Belt, the rules change when you're in the Rust Belt. And I don't know how to help you. I pity you guys up there, up north, working on this stuff because, you know, you guys are driving stuff around that is rusted out so bad that I wouldn't set foot in it. But see, I can afford to be picky because I live in south central Kansas and we just don't have rust problems here. You know, just one of the many, well, one of the few benefits of living in Kansas, I guess, is we don't have a lot of rust problems. The paint is still on stuff. That's how you know it's good. So, hope that helped you out. I know it's long-winded, but, you know, it takes time to explain stuff properly and go over all the details. So, if you do this project, good luck. And if you have any questions, let me know. And otherwise, I'm going to get back to work, and we'll just catch you guys in the next one.